Hi guys, we're gonna work on some really cool stuff. Rudder pedals, carbon fiber. I wanna tell all of you that entered to get some free magazines from my brother and I, thank you. There were several thousand of you. And so the first hundred, uh, we'll be sending out an email pretty soon. I'm working on trying to get something else going to see if we can kind of step up more than a hundred. So I'm gonna work on that. Stay tuned, but you'll be getting magazines soon. So thank you guys. Get into av aviation, stay excited, have fun, be nice to people. Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, we got three things going on all at the same time. We got parts in the oven, cooking over there. I just finished laying up. Sanding on the carbon fiber, starting to do a little body work as we go. And if we get too tired sanding and blocking, we can move on to parts like this. It had a bad landing, it's broken. It's crunched here, here. This area is busted through. However, scrap junk from something else is the perfect part for scrappy. So we're gonna make this like new. We'll even try to make it, maybe not better, but different and new, because I want to build into this the start of the new Garmin Avionics panel. And what I'm going to do there is probably a little bit silly for a Cub, but I love my Garmin Avionics. I love touchscreen, so I'm going to start cutting this up and making it the beginning bottom stage of an all glass panel. So I'm going to get to work on this. And then also, I've never worn this shirt. I just want to say freedom to fly. We should all appreciate it and help us keep it. AOPA, right here. They gave this shirt to me for bringing Draco to an air show. Uh, it was really nice of them. Thank you, AOPA. AOPA hasn't asked me to say this. I just love aviation so much. If you like aviation, whether you fly, don't fly, might fly, considering flying, or just want to support one of the coolest freedoms we have in America, which is flying, the freedom to fly, support AOPA. They're doing so much to keep airports open and regulations so that we have the freedom to go where we want, go camping with our friends, and go up in an airplane just because we love it. So there's my plug. I never really do that. So AOPA, thank you. If you're not a member, go become one. We love those guys. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, so I'm doing a couple things right now. I'm building a mold, well, not building. I'm done building an aluminum and tape and cardboard <laughs> to make a mold inside this plane. I'm actually really excited about it. It's just where my feet go for the feet well, and I'm doing things that have always bugged me. I don't like when stuff can get behind the pedal, whether it's rocks, dirt, I don't know, something that, a pen, that could get up and get behind the pedal. So I'm changing the whole shape of inside the plane where my rudder pedals and brakes are so that right after the hinge point of the movement, there's a huge arcing curve. So if anything goes up there, it slides right back out. And then I'm making, I contoured the sides rounded to match where you naturally put your feet and rest. So it's a comfortable resting location. And I'm building a big center console that's going up for a really wild Garmin Avionics panel I'm super excited about. And so I'm kind of starting the footwell mold, then I'll work up and do the others. We're just doing a thin, thin layer to get an idea of a shape. Then we got to pull the whole thing out of the plane, sand it, mold it, round it, clean it up. So this is like the beginning, beginning phase of the footwell. And when we get that done, then we can add carbon, bag it, shrink it up tight, and make a completely sealed foot chamber that has no areas for dirt or grit to work its way anywhere into the belly of the plane. Back to work, I got wet carbon. This part's coming along, I'm really happy with it. You can see my foot wells are all done. Um, this has been adapted a ton. There's a lot of stuff I left out, but I made a big Z-beam through the middle here out of carbon fiber to hold the new tube inset point, the original point. Everything's had to change a ton on what was 
the Carbon Cub belly pan, and it's been shortened and modified. So I won't go into all the details, but I'm really excited. It's coming together. But the foot wells, I'm probably the most excited about. And I'm doing something then to really reinforce the attach point of the pedals. Um, it wouldn't be critical except for I'm putting the attach point for the cable a little further out. And I really want to anchor that into the, the floor so those pedals don't start to get loose and move around. And so that the fulcrum point of tension has a matching offset bolt point in the floor. So you can see I've put in some aluminum embeds. You can't just put aluminum to carbon fiber, though that kind of looks like it. You can see the micro underneath and a fiberglass separator. If you look at this table right here, I want to show you three different products I'm going to use. This is fiberglass. I'm going to do several layers of fiberglass over top of the aluminum. I'm embedding the aluminum plates that are part of the bolt point of my rudder pedals and brakes. The other part of the bolt point actually bolts through to the main frame. So I'm actually bolted to the pan and the frame. The reason for that is I want to be able to pull the bolts that bolt the assembly to the main frame out, but not disconnect the pedal, the brakes, everything else. And they're bolted to the carbon fiber foot assembly so that it can all be built out of the plane and then just put it in the plane completely done and then add the bolts to hook it to the frame. So I want these embeds not just bolted to carbon fiber, I want a big metal plate. So I'm inserting them into the frame. I have to put several layers and completely isolate the aluminum from the carbon fiber. If you don't, you'll get a galvanic or galvanic corrosion tomato tomato, or maybe Clico Clico, it's Clico. I say it all kinds of ways. But you'll get a galvanic corrosion between aluminum and carbon fiber. So I'm gonna isolate it with this. Then I got a thinner carbon fiber. I'm gonna take for all the tight curves. I've attached a new belly or foot well to belly pan. is all bonded with micro. But now I need to layer that seam with carbon fiber. So all the tight corners, I'm gonna use this. The floor of the pan, I'm going to use this much heavier, much thicker. Um, I've gotten a lot of cubs and it's fine, but since I've relocated a few things, seats and attach points, I need to reinforce where I attach my seat, where the luggage is going to sit. There's a couple different pressure points. I won't get into all that boring detail, but I'm going to layer all the critical components with a lot more carbon fiber to thicken it up. So when you get in this plane, it feels really solid and the floor doesn't move and the pedals are anchored. Um, Cub Crafters did a fantastic job. Uh, these components are based off the EX3. And, um, but I've mixed things up a bit and I've got to reinforce for my alteration. So I'm not fixing a problem, they did it right. I'm fixing my new creation of different loads in different points. So I got to get equally as good, and that's what I'm trying to do. So you know the drill, back to work. We're a long way from where we started with this area being carbon cub, this area being all add-ons. That was a lot of work, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. It stayed very lightweight. Um, very strong and there's nowhere anything can sneak out from the foot wells. It's all watertight sealed up. So I'm really happy. Next project on this will be to paint the inside after we build the avionics bay. But this whole section coming through here is a new center pod start for a center avionics stack that we're going to get ready to get started on. So I'm really happy. It's very, very different, <laughs> but it's done. So let's go make some more carbon fiber parts. All right guys, so I'm relocating the cables to the outside of my aircraft, getting all that done. While carbon was drying, I decided we'd lighten up our pedals, polish them so you kind of see the before and after. This is my brother's Mark pedals from his carbon cub. Cub crafters did such a good job. If you hold these up next to another cub I got next door, um, 
It's unbelievable. They're like half the weight of other pedals assemblies. So they did a good job. So it was tough, but we got another four ounces out of it and polished them up, kind of think they look pretty cool. But what kind of got me started on this was, what can I do while I'm working on the cables, while carbon's drying? And the cables are going to the outside of the plane, and I don't like when I put my foot on a pedal and there's a cable rubbing the side of my shoe, or I hook it, uh, and I don't even like seeing it in the plane. So to get the cable out of the plane and not against my boots, um, where I'm rubbing on them, I needed to make this. So this is stainless steel, and it would be really, really heavy, but I drilled out the center, and this is for the rudder cable assembly. And if you look at that fit, and I wanted to make it as light as possible, instead of using a nut, I just made a pin that matches it. If I can get it in there, there we go. And that is the assembly. We don't need any washers, it's all done. Super lightweight. Now, it would have been a lot heavier and I wanted to go to a thinner bar, but when you do an analysis to see what it would take to bend it, if I used a quarter inch bar, which I could have hooked to, and then I had it in the side of the pedal, so I drilled this out through the side to attach this and have it come out the end to hold the cable away from my boot. If I used a quarter inch bar and hung it out here this far to hook the cable to, to get it inside the side of my plane where you can't see the cable and where my foot can't hit it, you could bend that bar. Going to this size of bar weighed a ton, so we bore drilled it all the way down. And to hook this, to bolt this to here, the cable assemblies use this little teeny tiny bolt. But if I just wanted to thread this to bolt it on the edge, right here, and I use this, then the smallest core drill I could have drilled out of this big heavy part would have been this big. So instead, I'm using this bolt, but that adds a lot of weight. But since it doesn't need that much strength, where did I put it? I bore drilled this bolt somewhere. So here I've got one not drilled and another one I've drilled. And yes, if you drill a hole through a bolt, it lightens it up. I did it when I did my grease search. A lot of people commented and asked, hey, but if you drill the bolt, doesn't that make it weaker? Yes, but what you always do is you go to the next size up and then you can drill it. And this bolt, even though it's drilled, is significantly stronger than this bolt, but I pulled the weight back out of it. But by going to a larger bolt, I was able to then bore drill this to a thin wall and still keep the strength and not be able to bend it. So I was able to pull the weight out by literally going to a larger bolt and drilling it. So it's a lot of work, but this is now the bolt that has been bored out. And now this tube is hollow all the way to the last eighth of an inch. And there is no way a linebacker in a plane is gonna push harder enough on this to bend this. First, they're gonna break rudder attach points. So this goes in this side, I bent my pedal like that so the cable can hook to it, and that bolt goes in it to hold it. So anyway, it's a lot of talking, but I'm excited. Cable's outside the plane, nothing against my feet. I saved some weight, back to work. All right guys, there's one other thing I'm doing that's a benefit of having this come out through into the aircraft besides not seeing my cables, but it just happened to work out that there was a bar passing right by it and I can weld a little teeny lightweight tab that as this pedal moves back and forth, it will hit it. And so I can adjust that tab and I'll set it so that if I go full rudder deflection, right as the rudder goes up and touches its intentional stop for max deflection, I'll set the bump stop for the pedal itself to be just a 30 second, maybe a six, up to a 64th past it so that I get full deflection, cable goes full tight, and then if you put any more pressure, it stops at the pedal rather than binding anything else in the aircraft or putting any unnecessary tension on the rudder. If you're panicking or just slam it, you got a lot of strength with your leg. I want it to get the rudder where it needs to be, but then the heavy force that you can add, I want it to hit this. So I'm gonna add that bump stop to it. Now where this is coming out the side of my pedal like this to get that cable, um, there's added leverage to the bottom of this. 
So I think it may have already shown it in the video, but um, I've added to the bottom of the attach point of this pedal a giant plate that I enlarged the attach point and I carried it out to the side and then added bolt points, added more bolts, added an embedded plate into the bottom of the carbon fiber and added attach points into the metal frame of the aircraft so that originally this pedal was attached with three screws at about this location and the, the leverage to twist this was on those three. I've moved those attach points about this far out and embedded them into the aircraft so that this can't twist to help make up for this little extra leverage. So there's a lot of little things, but they add up. I'm excited about it. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, so finally happened where I got to cut a bunch of stuff out and go backwards <laughs> so I can go forward. And I'm really glad I've gone through and I just tacked things with the MIG, planning to go back and weld it all out with the TIG when everything was done. Thank goodness, because in an earlier video, I had gone through and added a whole bunch more little rings for the rudder cables to pass through on the inside of the plane. And then later, when I was doing a carbon fiber frame uh, around the aircraft, I realized there might be just enough room to squeeze the cables from inside the frame to the outside. And I had to cut all these little guys off. So if you look at the plane right there, you see these string lines. They're running all the way down. You can see where my air box is, that this string line is passing. This air box is arced and shaped exactly to the carbon fiber fuselage. And you can see I can run a string line and not touch the side of the plane and run all the way down and add the rings to the outside where it used to be on the inside. And now it's gonna go here. And it actually makes the cable run so close to perfect that it just about dead centers all the way down, even though there's a little change in shape to the plane. So I'm really excited about it. I hate that I just cut off all that work, but at least I only had them tacked. And now I've got to change the carbon fiber fuselage a little, because at this point right here, the cable's gonna come and exit out of the carbon fiber. So it's hidden all the way down. The cables won't be visible inside the aircraft anywhere. So I'm really excited about that but I'm about ready to cut open my fuselage. So what I've done is this hole is gonna be where the cable starts to diverge from inside the plane to come outside the plane like all cubs do. And I want to not see a big long cable like you traditional, traditionally see coming through the fabric. So I've got a hole started here and I'm gonna cut it to a really wide hole here. I'm gonna simply take this tube Started on the inside of the plane where you'll barely see a tiny, tiny bump at this point. I'm gonna pass it outside the plane as this slot gets bigger, put the bump on this side, and basically I'm gonna have a long, slow taper up, ramped carbon fiber transition. So that cable transition from inside to outside over a, a period of that long, and I'll make a carbon fiber mold around that. And then you'll just see a little teeny length of cable that, where it connects directly to the rudder. So um, uh, it's a lot more work and I'm going backwards, but the end result's better. So I'm really excited about it. Let's get to work. <laughs> I see you in that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, guys, usually I'm a one take guy. I mean, I've been laughing and screwing up. Ron, my buddy, sticking his head through the fuselage of the aircraft right now and distracting me. Anyway, I've been sanding <laughs> the back of this aircraft like crazy. And if I get below 80 or 90% and I start fading, I just stop because I'm not as productive. Jump over to something else and then go back at it. So I'm finishing up all the rudder and cable assembly on this plane. I'm super excited to be done. Uh, I've already talked about moving the pedals and the attach point outside of the, the cabin area so you don't see it. Uh, all the machine parts are done, everything's installed. There's one thing I also added. This is the spring that comes with a uh, EX kit, carbon cub. This is the spring I'm adding. This spring is actually great. It's just designed to pull the pedal towards the firewall and that's enough and it saves a lot of weight. So Cub Crafters did a perfect job on this. However, I'm gonna add weight but I'm gonna take off more weight somewhere else to further 
add one more advantage that I currently do not have on this plane. And that is on the back of a rudder, a Cub has a bendable tab to trim out the rudder at standard cruise flight. I want to eliminate that entire bend tab, the rivets, and the weld points inside the rudder. If I take all that out, it's almost double the weight of the increase of the spring size. What I'm able to do with the spring to allow me to eliminate that is I'm adding a bigger spring that hooks from the pedal back to an embedded threaded joint in the foot of the plane. And if you look inside here, you can see this bigger spring hooked right there. What that allows me to do is where I've hooked it, I've got threads coming through the carbon fiber and I can adjust and spin that. I've got about an inch and a half of adjustment on each pedal. So I preload the correct tension on the springs, on the larger spring, and set the rudder, rudder to neutral. I'll go fly it, and if the plane sits an eighth ball, quarter ball, half ball, off center, then instead of bending a tab, I'll come in here, quickly disconnect it, spin it in, tighten the spring on one side, loosen the other, and I can trim out the rudder with no bend tab. So I've eliminated that aerodynamic drag, and I've eliminated more weight than I've added by adding a simple little spring to both sides. And I've got about 15 more pounds of pressure pulling on it. Even though this is much larger, the, the force loads are very similar. It's just this one's gonna really work well for what I'm doing and the distance I need it to move. So let's get this hooked up. All right, guys. Um, some of you, very few have noticed, there's always a skeleton kind of hanging around the shop in a different pose, sometimes the ceiling, sometimes in the engine bay, sometimes in the back of the aircraft. This little skeleton is our buddy. Ron is my best friend, helps me and have been helping me build planes forever. And he has this thing for skulls, skeletons, everything he has, his tattoos. And he brought me this gift to hang around and help us build Scrappy. His name, Scrappy. <laughs> this is Scrappy. He's got a carbon fiber headband on. So um, he's gonna go on first flight with me, hang out in the back. And he's here always helping out and, I don't know, making us laugh because we find the most strange places to pose in places. And uh, anyway, if you haven't noticed him, he'll be around. <laughs> Let me get back to work. Say hi to Scrappy. Okay, I'm about, let's see, 23 minutes into this mold. And uh, about five, 10 more minutes, I'll be ready. And I'm not even gonna put clear tape on this. This is a throwaway mold. I'm going to drape the carbon fiber right over this, pull it tight, put several layers, wrap the round around this edge so that I have a finished end where the cable will come out of the aircraft. So this will all be carbon closed. I can drill a perfect hole, it'll give me a nice strong end and cosmetically look right. So I'm going to do that on this side. Give me both sides of the aircraft, but I'll be able to put the peel ply on, stretch it tight, vacuum bag it right to this table. I want to have a part mold, carbon, bagged, put some lights on it, and done in under an hour. Um, we can do it. All right, guys, I'm down to my last layer. It's going really fast. There's a little trick. I don't know if it's a trick anyone will ever use, but while I finish this off, I'll tell you what I do. I'm trying to get a nice finished edge on this part. When I get down to this end, a lot of times it's hard. I want to actually close this off and make a finished end that I can just drill the hole just big enough for the cable. But if you don't pay attention to which way you pull the strands and where you cut it, it won't work right. Because as soon as I pull this down, it wants to make a bubble right there and a bubble right there. If I pull these back, and I first pull it down, then I grab this corner and I work the string down to the bottom, and this corner and I work the string down to the bottom, I can lose that kink in the top. And then we go half on this, and it's gonna want to have the same problem. As I come around, it wants to make a bubble. So now I work this way on a 45, or I'll undo that one, and I can pull that corner, Pull this one down at a slope, cut it off and do this corner. And we can make sure there's no 
area is that it wants to make a folded bump. And then when I go to sand this, every layer, I've done four layers here. Perfect round. I've got four layers on the top. I'm gonna peel ply and bag this down. But this end, since I overlap down, in, and in, that's three for every single over the top. So there's actually 12 layers of carbon on this end, which makes it really nice for me to be able to sand, shape, get this exactly the look I want, and then drill a perfect hole in the end for my cable. And then this will come from inside the fuselage, slide out the notch I made. I'll micro it in from the, the backside. When it dries up, then I can cut off all this extra that's hanging down the sides and then finish off a layer on the inside and the one layer on the outside. So you'll have a layer inside, outside, perfectly rounded. It's gonna be a really lightweight part. It should turn out. And we're actually doing really good on time. So one more layer on this and we're done. I got <laughs> grabber screws in there. They're making it tough. There we go. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> awesome. All right guys, here's our part. It took longer than an hour, but <laughs> not much. I got stuck on the phone, otherwise we would have made it. Here's the end that the cable is gonna come through. I put a little tongue and groove notch in this part. So the way this goes, drop this in here, slide it out. This tongue and groove bites here. This puts a shelf inside here. So if you look in here, you still see carbon fiber and that tucks out. So here's my transition from cable in the plane, cable out of the plane. <laughs> really happy. So I'm gonna bond this in from the backside. Then I'll sand off the excess carbon and then I'll lay up a carbon fiber layer inside. And then I'll put a nice, super smooth little micro round down this edge and down this edge and lay up one piece of carbon fiber here and some on the inside. So this will be extremely strong. But you can see how that works right there with the tongue and groove fit. Back to work. Okay, these are all done. There's they got a little tongue and groove on them. So they lock in, can't pull off while we bond it in place. So I've got this all taped off to protect it. I'm gonna lay up and do the back side first, let it dry, sand it, prep it, and then I'll do this side with that carbon fiber up and over this part. So it's turned out really good. I'm really happy with it. We're done. That turned out perfect. Tiny bit of light, wet sanding, and this will be ready for some clear. <laughs> awesome.